Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Just want to let y'all know real quick, if, after having seen this video, you want to learn even more about this particular album, Lightwork, from this particular artist, Devin Townsend, then you should follow the link in the description of this video to an interview that I conducted with Devin Townsend. We talked all about Lightwork, as well as its companion piece, Nightwork, and also the fate of the world, mental health, strapping young lad, jalapeno poppers, and oh so much more. Just a thought, you know, feel free to do with that information whatever you like, it's all good. It's only Heavy Devi, the one and only, your call, your prerogative, it's your time to kill, not mine. Lightwork is the latest studio album, and if I'm not mistaken, the 21st overall from Canadian prog and rock and metal musician Devin Townsend, who over the course of the past three decades has defined himself as one of the genre's most unique and creative and innovative voices, thanks to a massive discography spanning multiple different projects and genres and styles and tones. He played hard rock and shred metal with Steve Vai in the early 90s, moved on to some really over-the-top, bombastic, technical, punishing shit with Strapping Young Lad. He has a blues project called Casualties of Cool. He's released a slew of solo albums, one of which is a sci-fi space opera concept album about a Kang the Conqueror-esque villain known as Ziltoid the Omniscient, except instead of trying to take over the universe, he just really, really Really, really likes coffee to a scarily unhealthy degree. A couple of years back, he went on an unrestrained creative crusade through Empath, which I have described as a Las Vegas-style buffet of Devon Townsend prog metal excess. The man is, to be blunt, very weird. But he's also very good at his job. As different as all of these projects are, they're also very interesting. If Devin Townsend is consistent in at least one area, it is the quality of his output. With all of this in mind, it should not at all be shocking for anyone to hear that Lightwork is very different from previous Devin Townsend records and also still very good. Why is that? Because it's Devin Townsend. That's why. We just went over all of this. Are you paying attention? Stop asking stupid questions. What might be surprising for you to hear, though, is that this might be Devin Townsend's most accessible album to date, and also his most optimistic, and still his most poignant. This is a very bright and hopeful album. While there are some heavier textures and riffs and beats and such, some of which wouldn't even be out of place on a Strapping Young Lad album, hypothetically, this is not an especially heavy album in tone. In multiple interviews, including mine, Devin Townsend has said that Lightwork is meant to be a bridge between continents. If Empath is before COVID, and The Puzzle and Snuggles is during, then Lightwork is meant to represent after. It is meant to be like an actual lighthouse, like the one on the album cover, a beacon. His goal is very much to create something cooler, as he put it in our interview. He's not interested in hyper-focusing on political and social unrest, on corruption, on the never-ending dystopian chaos of this modern era, but rather in creating an album that is positive and represents a positive state of mind. Opening track Moon People, for instance, is a very simplistic, spacey, kind of upbeat prog rocker. I'm reminded a little bit of like Second Law era Muse, combined with like some of the New Age prog metal influences from Devin Townsend Project albums like Epic Cloud and Transcendence. It has a nice, pleasant momentum to it, thanks to some chugging rhythms and some really great vocal textures and harmonies. I like how it uses a sci-fi coat of paint to talk about freedom and staying as calm as possible in the face of the unknown. 
The following track, Lightworker, builds on this with massive operatic choruses and horns and melodies. It's a very anthemic and inspiring number, preaching unity and togetherness. It radiates so many good, loving, positive vibes that you'd swear it has a heavenly glow to it. It even opens with Devin writing, May your heart be filled with love. May your mind be strong enough. Going on to say in the chorus, tell me there's another, lead me to the mother, we are all of us. Tell me there's another, lean into it, brother, we are all of us. Then there's Call of the Void, which I'm just going to go ahead and say it. One of the most endearing, one of the warmest pieces of music I think I've heard on a Devin Townsend record. Definitely that I've heard on this record. I mean, it really does feel like Devin is trying to connect with you on a very personal level through the way that he emotively and passionately croons and sings. Uh, the chorus is very strong. The lyrics especially, I, I think, are quite beautiful. Writing here, because when you see the world's insane reaction to follow your heart, the worst reaction is to freak out, so don't you freak out. Lightwork at no point very wisely tries to copy the levels of insanity or absurdity that we heard on Empath. Not that it could, even if it did try, because that thing it kind of feels like a lightning in a bottle record to a certain extent. But I do like how as Lightwork goes along, it does uh, get more comfortable going into weirder and more progressive territory. For instance, Dimensions is caked with psychedelic textures, and it has some shred metal style guitar work, and at the very end it has some more extreme beats and some more beefy muscular riffery that wouldn't in theory be out of place on maybe one of the Ziltoid records, or even as we alluded to before, like a Strapping Young Lad record or something like that. Kind of, maybe, sort of. The closing track, Children of God, as well, is filled to the brim with angelic singing and regal instrumentation. It's a really epic, grandiose, cinematic number. And in the midst of all this, too, you still have something very laid back and relaxed like Vacation, which in a weird way does kind of sound like Devin Townsend himself going on vacation, just kind of letting go, unplugging for a bit, just kind of playing something pleasant for the sake of doing so. The production here is immaculate, Devin sounds amazing, everything is just so rich and full of love and life. I've really thoroughly enjoyed this record. I'm feeling a very strong 4 to 5. A part of me wishes that it was a little bit more unpredictable and a little bit more wild and over the top. I also think that it does lull a little bit in the middle just after Dimensions, but, you know, overall, still an extremely well-made album in almost every single fashion imaginable. It's really refreshing to have an album with a really positive and hopeful outlook on the world, on the state of things, with positive messages and ideas and vibes to spread and to share with all. This album is a beacon of light in the stormy abyss that we are calling Life in 2022, and it is Devin Townsend's most mature record on top of being, as we said before, his most accessible, his most optimistic, and his most poignant. Very enthusiastic 4 to 5. Definitely check this out. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fucking-immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.